Welcome everyone to Partnering for Progress. We're going to talk about leveraging relationships to propel your cleaning business growth. And uh, this is something that I've experienced over and over again in my business. It's made a huge difference for our business in Michigan. And so I'm going to share more about that during my presentation. Uh, but before we jump in, I just kind of want to give you some background about how this all got started. So um, I'm Jeannie Henderson. I'm a cleaning business owner in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm a Cleaning for a Reason partner. Uh, cleaning for a Reason is near and dear to my heart. It's something that our team is highly committed to. And so we wanted to do something for our Cleaning for a Reason partners to help your businesses grow. Because we know if your business is healthy and doing well, that gives you the ability to happily help more cancer patients in your area. So we want to help you grow so that you can serve more patients and also just to help you have a better business experience and a better life. Uh, so we want to help serve you. And um, I wanted to invite Sandy to come on and uh, say hello to our Cleaning for a Reason partners and guests. Sandy, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sandy Wolfram. I'm the ISSA Charities De Development Director. And Cleaning for a Reason is one of our um, signature programs. And we really appreciate everything that the Cleaning for, a, Cleaning for a Reason partners do to help us clean cancer patients' homes. Um, we couldn't do what we do without you. And the cancer patients I know are very, very appreciative. Um, they're going through a major turmoil in their life and they are so um, appreciative of what you do to help them. Um, in the community. So thank you. We, again, we can't thank you enough for what you do. Well, yeah, I'm a hundred percent with you, Sandy. Um, you know, one of the things when I'm talking to cleaning for a reason partners, you know, I, a lot of times they're like, I don't know how to do this or how to do that. And I think a lot of people don't realize uh, about all of the resources that are available on the cleaning for a reason website. And um, so I wanted to bring that up today. So if you are not sure, uh, you know, how to promote that you're part of Cleaning for a Reason, how to get the word out in your community, don't hesitate to reach out to Sandy and Lucy and the amazing team at Cleaning for a Reason and just go to the website, to the partner portal. There's so much information there uh, that is so helpful. And I know whenever I have a question, uh, our Cleaning for a Reason team is always there to help me. And uh, Sandy said, or excuse me, Lucy said, um, we have 1,400 now amazing cleaning partners in Cleaning for a Reason. And I want to encourage you, um, actually, I just, I think, signed up another Cleaning for a Reason partner this week. And I want to encourage you, if you know other cleaning business owners, to encourage them to get involved. More hands uh, just helps more people. So. All right. Well, thank you, Sandy. Appreciate you being here today. And um, so how our webinar is going to go today, I have a presentation. I'm going to share with you so many ideas. So I want you to dial in, uh, take some time to just tune out from everything else if you can, and be sure and have a notepad or a document open so that you can take some notes because I am going to be firing many, many ideas in your direction. I don't want you to miss anything. Uh, so make sure you do that. And if you have a question, please jot that down. Uh, I'll be taking questions at the end. So make sure to stay at the end. We will be done by four o'clock today, Eastern time, 3 p.m. Central. And uh, so want you to be sure and um, get your questions answered. So if you have a question, jot it down. We will be using the chat for questions today. So um, if you do have a question, you can drop it in the chat. We have the amazing Brendan Marshall from ISSA Charities helping us here today. Thank you, Brendan, and Martha Schmidt from ISSA uh, helping us as well. So Brendan will be watching those questions for me. Uh, and if you do have Cleaning for a Reason questions, we have all the Cleaning for a Reason experts in the room today. So we'll be able to answer those questions too. So save your questions till the end um, and we'll be using the chat throughout. So um, before we get started, I would love to know um, if any of you find getting new clients or getting new employees a challenge, if you say, yes, that's a challenge, put yes in the chat. 
If you're having a challenge getting clients or employees, and is clients or employees your biggest challenge? Um, I know some people struggle with getting clients and some people struggle with getting employees, some with both. Uh, I will say this, uh, after talking to hundreds of cleaning business owners that very rarely do you have exactly the right number of employees for the right number of clients. Um, but yeah, it is a challenge right now. And, that, and that's why I wanted to bring to you some, some easy, fun, and low cost ideas that you can use in your business right now. You can start today that will help you reach out to get more clients and like Todd said, more employees, right? Uh, and so building relationships can help you grow in both ways. And that's why I wanted to bring these ideas um, to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my presentation. I'm gonna share my screen. It'll take me just a second to get that going. So I'm excited to share with you today the things that I have learned uh, over my years in the business world. Um, I've been an entrepreneur almost all of my life. Uh, I'm happy to say I love being an entrepreneur and uh, so love sharing this with you. And our presentation today is brought to you by Cleaning for a Reason and our friends at ISSA Residential. So we thank them for being our sponsor, getting this information out to you. So if we haven't met before, I know I have a lot of friends here today, but if we haven't met before, a little bit about me. I am the CEO of Jeannie Cleaning in Kalamazoo, Michigan. My name is Jeannie Henderson, hence the name. And, uh, and I've been in business for eight and a half years. When I first started out, it was pretty rough. I really didn't know what I was doing, even though I had been an entrepreneur almost all of my life, running a cleaning business was a lot harder than I thought, and I didn't really know what I was doing. And then I found some help through my coach, Debbie Sardone, and joined her program, which is called Cleaning Business Fundamentals. I'm still part of that program today, and now I am a master business coach in that program, and I get the pleasure and joy of helping hundreds of cleaning business owners grow their business. And I am currently the Residential um, Cleaning Council Chair of ISSA. So I also get the honor of representing you, our cleaning business community, to the Worldwide Cleaning Association. And I'll tell you a little bit more about ISSA a little bit later. Um, but as we all know, growing a business is very hard. And when you start out in the cleaning business, it's hard to find time between getting the houses cleaned and you know running your business, doing the marketing, uh, you know hiring new employees, training new employees, doing all of the paperwork and you know working with clients, all of the things that you have to do. And it's hard to find time to do all the things that you need to do. And I started out like many of you uh, cleaning in homes. Uh, I did buy a small customer list business uh, from some friends of ours back in 2015, but I did start cleaning. And um, I found very quickly that it was hard to grow my business and clean at the same time. So I understand what it's like to try to clean and grow at the same time. And so I knew one of the very first things that I probably needed to do was get out of the field. And that's what Cleaning Business Fundamentals helped me do. Uh, and then I was able to focus more on marketing and hiring the way that I needed to. And over time, I was able to grow a great team. Uh, very proud of my team. We now have almost 30 people on my team, including my administrative staff. And we're growing like crazy, and I'm thankful to say that. But I, I will share with you that the strategies that I'm going to share with you today are much the reason why our business is growing uh, and has kept growing even when other businesses are stuck or stalled. And uh, so the strategies that I'm going to share with you are fun and inexpensive and extremely effective. So as I said, growing a business is hard. And one of the things that's also really hard about being in a cleaning business is that it can be sometimes very lonely. Any type of entrepreneurial um, business uh, can be very lonely. And especially your friends and family don't understand what you're going through. Have any of you experienced that? I know my friends and family thought I was crazy starting a cleaning business. So if your friends and family think you're crazy, put crazy in the chat because I'll tell you what, everyone around me, and I think they still think I'm crazy, 
could not understand why I would want to start a business where I had to clean toilets for a living. And honestly, it's really not about that. You know, I'm probably a lot like you. I have a heart for service and I'm sure you probably do too. I just love to help people have a better life. And um, so that's what it's really all about. But most of the people around me didn't understand what I was going through. I had no one to talk to, to get help or just a shoulder to cry on. So yes, that is a big challenge. The other challenge is the speed of change. Just in the last few years, the speed of change has accelerated rapidly. It is hard to keep up. And it's difficult to know what to do to grow your business. Um, so some of the ways that change is happening is one of the things that we're seeing now post pandemic is increased competition. There was that, what is it? The great resignation. You know, a lot of people left their jobs and they're starting businesses of their own or they're doing gig work. And um, so there is a lot of increased competition. I welcome people into the cleaning business. The more, the merrier. I believe there's plenty of homes for all of us, but it does change the landscape. Algorithms. I hate that word. <laughs> does anyone hate the word algorithms? If you do say I hate it because algorithms change every day. And what algorithms are, are the way that all of the different um, online platforms change so rapidly. So one thing that works today won't work tomorrow. Facebook ads have changed. Google, their algorithms change like weekly. And, um, you know, there's just a lot of changes in ways that we used to be able to advertise. And now it's difficult because you can't keep up. And the social audience is getting more and more fragmented. It's harder to get in front of all the people who might be your potential clients or your potential employees. Um, I should have included Indeed on here. Indeed is like the bane of my existence, right? Everybody gets so frustrated with Indeed because they have too much control. Hopefully there'll be a new hiring platform coming out soon that will compete with Indeed. But that social audience is so fragmented. What used to be, you could just go on Facebook. Now there's Facebook and Instagram. And then now that you have to have videos on YouTube. And then of course there's TikTok if you wanna go there. So it's tough to know where to get in front of the people you should. And then there's all this pressure of creating content. Uh, you know, it's all like video is the thing. You have to be on video. Well, some of us don't feel comfortable making video. We don't even know where to start. And it just seems like a whole lot of work. And, um, you know, so all of these things are creating such a big challenge for all of us. And a lot of these things can end up being very, very costly, especially like if you don't feel comfortable doing video, finding someone to create a video for you, tell you what, it is pricey. If you've ever gotten a quote for video creation, I'm telling you, it is so expensive if you're not trading for it. So that's why I wanted to talk to you today about partnering for progress. I believe we can all find other ways to reach the audience we're seeking, whether it's prospective employees or prospective clients. There's lots of other ways to do it. We don't have to keep shoveling money into Google or shoveling money into Indeed necessarily. Uh, and so some of the strategies that I'm going to talk about today, I think you'll be able to start using right away in your business to help you grow. Today, we're going to talk about local networking, joint venture programs, community events, and finding a community of peers. I love this quote because this is so true. You don't close a sale until you open a relationship. And it is just 100% true, whether it's a relationship of hiring an employee. And I always say hiring is selling. You have to sell the job to the prospective employee. You have to build a relationship to get them to want to work with you. Same with a client. It's all about relationship building. And there are so many opportunities to do it. And we just have to step out and take a chance and reach out to people if we want to grow our business. All right, so first, I wanna talk about local networking. Uh, local networking, a lot of times when people hear networking, there's like a major eye roll, like, oh, I hate networking. How many of you dislike networking um, or don't want to network? 
uh, say, say, I hate it. I don't like it. Ew, blech. Yeah, right. A lot of people are like, please do not make me stand there with a glass of wine handing out business cards for two hours, right? Um, Jonathan, he says he's an introvert. That's amazing, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I bet, you know, it's, it's a challenge for a lot of us to get out there, put ourselves out there and network. But I've got some great news for you. So Leslie says she loves networking. So this is right up your alley, but anybody can do networking. It doesn't have to be that ew, yucky networking that you think it is. Um, there's all kinds of ways to network. Now, of course, the first thing that many of us think of is BNI. If any of you have been in BNI, right, I have in the chat um, because, uh, you know, I've gone to BNI. I've been in BNI meetings and there, I know a lot of people who have built their businesses on BNI. Um, and so that's what a lot of people think about with networking. And I will tell you, um, public speaking is something that a lot of people find terrifying and B and I will break you of that very quickly because you do have to get up and talk almost every time. And uh, so that's one of the reasons that either people love it or hate it. And B and I can be very costly, but guess what? There are a bunch of other local groups in your community right now that cost little or nothing to be part of. Uh, one of the groups that I am part of is called Buy Local. And you probably, you might have another group called the Local Alliance or something like that. That's just a local business group. The one that I am in, I think it costs $150 a year, almost nothing, right? And, but it gets me and gets my business in front of a lot of other people. And I actually serve as a volunteer in that group because I also believe volunteering is a great way to get your name out in front of other people. Uh, your local chamber of commerce is invaluable. And when you go to those meetings, I want you to go to them with a the thought of not going there, like telling people everything about you, right? You just want to meet others and learn about their business. Then they'll want to learn about you. Um, so a lot of times these networking events that these groups host uh, are the things that give networking a bad name, right? You always run into the, you know, person who gets a little too close and is uncomfortable, gets in your bubble and wants to talk to you for half an hour and they're shoving their business cards in your face. But I want to encourage you to attend some of these local networking events, but with a different frame of mind. Uh, go with the thought of giving more than taking. So I like to just go to these networking events and asking people questions. And I'm gonna give you a question to ask once you get to know another business owner that will really change the course of those conversations. And the question is, once you learn all about their business is, who would be your perfect referral? If I were to send you a referral, who would that person be? Because I wanna keep you in mind in case there's ever an opportunity to send you a referral. That is going to make that person very interested in you. And they're gonna wanna reciprocate. Reciprocation is part of building a relationship. And suddenly they'll be asking you about your business and what's your perfect referral. So don't forget that question. It really piques people's interest and they'll want to get to know you better. So here's one for those of you who hate networking events, social media networking. This is something that really took off during the pandemic years. There wasn't much good about the pandemic, but this was one of the good things that came out of it. A lot of groups sprung up and people started networking online. And in my town, there are a couple of networking groups that have five and 8,000 people in them. There's a restaurant networking group that has over 30,000 people in it just in my small town. So these are a great place to go and network with people. But again, remember networking is giving more than receiving. And so the way to network in these groups is to interact with people on their posts and also share their posts they, when, when you share someone else's post, they see that you've done that. And then they want to know more about you. Give more than you receive. And suddenly people want to be your friend. And I have gotten thousands of dollars of business that's still on my books today from networking in these social media groups. And I still participate to this day at a very high level because at almost every day someone's tagging my business uh, because I've been involved in these social groups. So search on Facebook primarily, uh, but there might also be some on LinkedIn in your area, but it's a great way to meet more people. Now, the other thing that you can do is create your own network. Reach out to businesses around where you're located 
and other businesses that you might cross refer with and create your own network. Reach out to people you don't even know, look them up in the phone book and introduce yourself and say, I'd like to learn a bit more about your business because my clients sometimes are looking for a carpet cleaner or a window cleaner or a lawn care company, or if you live in a cold state like me, a snow plowing company. Um, you know, so build those relationships. I'm going to share with you about one of the relationships that I built very early in my business that was super impactful and still is to this day. When This is what happens when you start networking and then people start buzzing about you. I like to think about it like bees buzzing all over town. And I met a guy right when I first started my cleaning business through my husband. My husband met him at the gym and his name is Pete and he owns a, re uh, not a he owns a commercial cleaning business. And when he found out we owned a residential cleaning business, he was so excited because he gets tons of phone calls for residential cleaning and he doesn't do that. He doesn't do residential cleaning. So he wanted to find someone to refer those calls to and we happily took them. We don't do commercial cleaning very much, just a little bit during the day. So we send all of those bigger commercial jobs to him. I gave him so many jobs. He asked me to stop sending him referrals, but he gave me so many referrals over the first few years of our business and they're still on our books today. I wanna share with you what that looks like. So these are all the people that Pete referred to us and the cleaning amounts for each of their homes. So he referred Betty to us. Betty, way back eight years ago, was a biweekly client at $300 a week. So that house is quite a bit more today. Um, Lisa uh, was then referred by Betty. Lisa's in Betty's family. She was $275 a month. Then Pam was referred by Betty. She's also in her family. That She's a $135 a week biweekly client. And then Betty's an artist. We started cleaning her studio. That was 125 a month. Then Betty's administrative assistant. We started cleaning her house. That was 175 biweekly and on and on. We ended up getting more and more referrals through this one original contact. And what I wanna share with you is just how valuable that is. How many of you have built your business on referrals? If you have built your business or you started your business mostly on referrals, write referrals in the chat. I know a lot of us, I built my business completely on word of mouth for the first two years. I didn't spend a dollar on marketing. And um, if you would like more referrals, I mean, referrals are warm leads. They're easy to sell. They're 60% more likely to close than a cold lead, right? So Leslie says strictly referrals, right? A lot of us have grown our business this way. Well, guess what? If you start engaging in relationship building in your community, you can see a 30% increase in referrals by spending very little. It's just your time. I encourage you to learn to like networking because it can make a huge difference for your business. Um, just think about it as marketing and try to make it fun. Um, you know, I'm a girl, I like to buy outfits. So I'm like, it gave me a reason to buy new outfits. <laughs> So whatever reason helps you get out there to network, I encourage you to do more of it. It adds up to a lot. So just from that one referral partner, Pete, who introduced me to Betty, who introduced me to all these other people. Now I did pay out some referral rewards. I'm pretty generous in the way I refer reward my referrals. I didn't reward Pete because we had a handshake agreement to give each other referrals. But I did reward Betty $100 for each of her referrals. So it cost me $600. The annual revenue generated from those clients is $30,000 a year, just from knowing Pete. But get this, if those clients stay with us for three years, which is pretty much average, a little bit, maybe, you know, some clients it's 20, 28 months, some clients it's like 38 months, but that would be over three years, $90,000 just from knowing Pete. Isn't that amazing? So this is where networking pays off. These are dollars in your pocket and it's so important to get out there. So Ivan Meisner, who founded BNI, um, he said that your network is your net worth. Your local, comp or local connections can open doors for you in a way that nothing else does. So don't discount networking. 
and start small. You don't have to do all the things that I'm sharing with you today. If you just get one great idea today, that can make all the difference. But get ready because I'm bringing you some more ideas. All right, so next up is joint ventures. This is where you can partner with other businesses to grow together. We have some great partnerships with real estate agents and different housing groups in our area. Um, I didn't get the job, but one of the housing groups that I was trying to get working with was um, like a seniors condominium complex where they provide all the cleaning for all the condos. Imagine how sweet that deal would have been if I would have gotten it. Now, I didn't get it, but those are the kinds of opportunities that are out there. And I wouldn't have even known about it if I hadn't been out there networking. So find other businesses that are complementary to yours. What are some other businesses that your clients would use? Put that in the chat. Think about it. What are some other businesses that your clients probably use? Things like carpet cleaning, window cleaning, lawn care, right? How about thinking a little bit farther, like dog grooming? I mean, how many of your clients have dogs? Uh, so think about businesses that your clients use and how can you partner with them? One of the ways that we've partnered is we've done contests every year on Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. We put together a gift basket with gift cards and uh, products from a bunch of local businesses and then we um, have contests on social media and we send people to our website to enter. And those lists, um, that list of people, we know that they're interested in house cleaning. So only one person wins the prize, but then we have an email list of a bunch of people who are interested in house cleaning and other home services that we can now market to. So contests are a great way to partner. Uh, this flyer here we use as a sales incentive. It's our joint venture project where we uh, ex we exchanged offers with several other businesses, and we created a flyer with those offices and so um, those businesses. So when we are selling uh, to a potential client, we say to them, "Hey, if we you know finish this deal today, I will send you over five hundred dollars worth of discounts from other local businesses." So we kind of use it as a closing tool. And then we also use it as a gift to our existing clients. Um, this has been a great promotion for us. But any way that you can cross promote, do you have a newsletter that you send to your client? Or do you know someone, another business that has a newsletter? You could just exchange offers and put them in each other's newsletters. Now you're reaching each other's audiences. It doesn't cost anything but it's a great way to reach more people. So these joint ventures can really pay off. I want you to think about how people make buying decisions. When we're talking about relationships, this is really important to consider. Um, when people buy or when they go to get a new job, how do they decide? And I like to call it the know, like, and trust factor. If people are gonna buy from you or if people are gonna come work for you, they have to know you like you and trust you all three otherwise they won't and so people want to know who you are why i should like you and how you know how other people other what other experiences people have had with you so reviews are so important too but these decisions i want you to know and this is 100 percent true this is from brian tracy's research they are over 90 percent emotional Buying decisions and job decisions. People buy because of how they feel. We often let it get into our heads and think it's all about the dollars, but it isn't. People buy because of how they feel about your business. When you're getting out and building relationships with people, every time you get in a room where there's 25, 50, or 70 people, now there's that many more people who know your brand. Have you ever gone out and you're talking to somebody and you introduce yourself and you know everybody says, what do you do, oh, what do you do? And that person has never heard of your business. It's happened to me and it's so disappointing because we work so hard, right? We work so hard. Has that ever happened to you? Like you go out and you're like, hey, I'm with Jeannie Cleaning and you're like, oh, what? I haven't heard of that before, what do you do? You know, so it's really disappointing when that happens. Well, I'll tell you what, after eight years of being in our community the way that we have been, I hardly ever run into somebody who hasn't heard of our business. 
And I'm only serving 450 families in our business. And there are over 250,000 people in my community, but I run into people I've never seen before who know my business all the time now. But I believe 100% that it's from this kind of work, this community work. And it feels so good, right, Lacey? It feels so good when people know you. And you can have a really great product. You can be the best cleaner in town. You can, you know, you can have great employees on your team, but people aren't going to want to come work for you and they aren't going to want to do business with you if they don't know much about you. And networking is a great way to change that in your community. Um, I'm, I'm a testament to it. I really believe that people know our business because of all the things that I'm sharing with you today. Um, that those joint ventures that I was talking about, that leverages the strength of others' businesses and you all achieve greater success together. And other business owners want to work with you. Actually, I just put together a partnership to do a charity donation with two other cleaning business owners today in my town. Uh, and I, you know, I do a lot with my local competitors as well. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Community events is another great way to get out there and network. There are so many events that you can sponsor and get involved with. If you do sponsor a local event, whether it's a charity event or you know, a kids sports event or something, I encourage you to get as involved as you can. Don't just give them money and have them put a logo on a flyer. If you can get out there and have a table or anything like that, or put inserts in the welcome packets or anything like that, find other ways to add value to your sponsorship. We do this all the time. We're really involved in local kids' sports. And sports parents are really busy. They need to have their house cleaned. Just telling you. So we make sure that when we do kids' sports sponsorships, that every single family either gets an email or a flyer from us. We also do fundraising. So we're really involved in cleaning for a reason. We love to talk about cleaning for a reason in everything that we do. And so we are part of the fundraising team uh, at Cleaning for a Reason, we get really involved every year. But I'll tell you what, that draws people to us. When they see that we're working hard to help other organizations, especially one that touches their heart, like Cleaning for a Reason, every single family has been touched by cancer. And so it's very moving. And people want to come alongside you and help. So um, fundraising, actually, we're doing a charity drive for tornado victims in our area right now. Uh, that's the one that we're doing with two other cleaning businesses. And these types of opportunities are great ways to get your word out there. And it also, I just have to always add, it doesn't just bring you clients. It brings you potential employees. When potential employees see your involvement in cleaning for reasons, see that you're so proactive to help and get involved, they want to be part of that. People want to be part of something bigger. So you can give them that opportunity. Also, making donations to community events like charity auctions. Uh, we do that. We've done it dozens of times. It doesn't always end up being a new client, but it does get our name in front of hundreds and hundreds of people every year when we donate to these charities. Volunteering with your team, getting involved with a local cleanup. Um, we've gone out and like handed out water at local like race events and things like that. When you can get your team out in front of the community, that's a great way to do it. If you have done any of these things, please share your ideas in the chat. People love ideas and I want everyone to share. So um, Elizabeth was sharing some ideas. So yeah, please share. And then trade shows and expos. So this is a picture of the last home expo that we did. Um, as you can see, Cleaning for a Reason is front and center at every event that we do. And um, because it's just a big part of our identity and it can be part of yours too. It's so funny. Um, I, you know, Debbie Sardone is my coach and she is the founder of Cleaning for a Reason. And often people will ask me if I'm the founder of Cleaning for a Reason because we're so involved. And I always, you know, I always let them know, no, that's the amazing Debbie Sardone. But I'm honored that people think that, but it's because we care so much. Thanks for sharing your ideas, everyone. That's great. More ideas, the better for everyone. When you participate in community events, I want you to see the impact of that. It can increase your brand visibility by 50%. 
you can go from being an unknown cleaning business to being known by everyone in a very short time just by participating in one community event. One that I forgot to put on my list was parades. We participate in one or two parades every year and we are in front of thousands of people, thousands, who might not have ever heard of us before. And it takes people six to 10 times before they ever want, you know, seeing your brand, before they ever want to do business with you or work for you. People need to know your name and this is how you get your name out there. And remember I said, people need to know, like, and trust you. When you are active in your community, it boosts your brand, but it also fosters trust and loyalty. This really contributes to your know, like, and trust factor. So you want to get out there in the community so people know you, people want to know you. And finally, I wanna share with you how important it is to find a community of peers. If you're just enjoying today being around a bunch of business owners that know what you're going through, you know, this is what it's like. When you're part of a community of peers, you are never alone. You always have someone you can talk to who understands your pain as a cleaning business owner, right? They understand our unique challenges. And so um, when I found my first community of cleaning business peers, I tell you what, it was life-changing for me. I was about ready to give up when I first started my cleaning business and I couldn't figure out how to do everything. But then when I started to get to know other cleaning business owners, I finally felt like somebody got me, right? Somebody understood what I was going through. So here are some ways to find a community of peers. Now, this may seem a little counterintuitive, but I'm gonna encourage you to get to know your local competition. Now, I don't really call them competition. They are just other business owners in my area, but it's really great to get to know other cleaning business owners in your area. There's plenty of business for all of us. And I have many friends who are cleaning business owners in my town. And um, I just met another new one the other day. And I introduce myself to new business owners as I see their businesses joining the ranks in my town. But this is a great way just to get to know other cleaning business owners. You don't have to share your trade secrets with them, but you can commiserate and you can support each other uh, and do things together to help each other grow. Another great place is online forums and groups. Uh, you may have found this webinar today through one of our online groups like the Cleaning for a Reason group or um, the ISSA group. And those are great places to interact with people and ask questions and help others. You know, that's the other thing too. We get blessed when we help others. So this is a great way to jump in. Like I've seen you guys sharing with each other right here in the chat. That kind of thing is so helpful um, for us. And then there's industry conferences. There's nothing like stepping out of your business for a day or two and kind of like stopping what you're doing and just focus on learning and getting stronger and getting better. Like I congratulate you today for taking this time to be here. I know this is a commitment to take time away from your busy day to be here, but this is how we grow. And then trade associations. Um, there are many different associations you can get involved with, um, but specifically, I want you to know that you do not have to go it alone, and you shouldn't. This is not the type of business that you need to. We need to reach out and get in relationships with other people. This is where you get valuable insights and, and support that you need for your business to share ideas, get supported, build friendships. I have many friends sitting here today um, and find mentors. You know, I love being the smallest business in the room. Uh, you know, it's great because I learn from everyone around me. And this is a place where you can do it when you get involved in community groups. And the other thing is being around other business owners helps you see the potential of what your business could be. And uh, often, we don't believe we can get to a certain level, but I never thought I'd have a million dollar business until I started hanging around with million dollar business owners. It changes the way you see things. Before we go today and before we get into Q&A, I do want to share with you about ISSA Residential. 
Uh, this is a great trade association and I highly recommend it. Uh, of course, I'm a volunteer with ISSA Residential, but it's been life-changing for me. ISSA exists to elevate the standard of professionalism in our residential cleaning industry. And when you join ISSA, it really helps you position your business to be, prof be a professional, trusted, and experienced business in your community. People associate you with whomever you're a part of. And so by, by making ISSA Residential part of your brand, including it on your website, um, sharing information from ISSA Residential in your community, those kinds of things make you look like a trusted expert in your community, the trusted expert that you are, right? I know we have some ISSA residential members here with us today. If you're an ISSA member, can you say, um, I'm part of ISSA in the chat? Let's see how many members we have with us today. Um, but I want to share with you that ISSA has been just an amazing experience for me. And um, many of our volunteers are here today. And if you want to share your experience with ISSA in the chat, that would be wonderful. It, or something that you love about ISSA, I'd love for you to share that in the chat too. That would be great because um, there are just so many great things about ISSA. But ISSA Residential is a cleaning association. We're part of the Worldwide Association and we're one division of that. And there's also commercial cleaning and business service contractors and distributors and manufacturers. It's a great resource for many things. But for our ISSA Residential members, um, there are many benefits. There are ways to get access to lots of discounts, including like employee benefits, including health care, retirement plans, things like that. Um, there's cleaning supply discounts. There's one supplier that provides 40% off microfiber and mops and supplies, all kinds of discounts. There's tons of education. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that, but if you like this kind of education that you're getting today, there are volumes. I can't, there's dozens of free webinars available um, through ISSA Residential just for you, the residential cleaning business owner. And finally, there's community. There's those relationships that you can build for you that will help you grow your business. When I'm talking about education, there's a full online learning center. So if you're a member, you suddenly instantly have access to dozens of webinars about marketing, about hiring, right? And about insurance, about um, profitability and accounting, uh, just any kind of topic that you can think of in your business that you need help with, there is an online training session for designed just for you. And we have strength in numbers. When we come together, uh, we can do so much more. And I have so many lifelong friends that I've made through ISSA. I'm just so grateful to be part of this organization. I'll always be part of ISSA as long as I'm in the cleaning industry because this is where I can get information 24 seven if I need it. And there's always someone there to support me. And there are different ways that you can be a member, but I want you to notice. So these are like the three different levels of membership. I don't have the pricing on there, but I'm going to give you the link to go and look at it in just a minute. But I want you to see that you get free education for your employees when you sign up. So we have a program called the PHC, the Professional House Cleaning uh, Certification. And you get that free, unlimited for all of your employees um, for the first 90 days that you join. That pays for your membership like right out of the gate, but then there's so much more. Um, and we have lots of great events. As a matter of fact, we have coffee and conversation coming up in July. That's a free event that I totally suggest that you go to to meet some more of our members. But we gain power when we work together. So I wanted to um, finish up today by just inviting you to a really great community. If you want to network more, if you want to learn more, um, I want to invite you to join me at ISSA, in ISSA Residential. We have um, live events. We have online events like this all the time. We have a monthly coffee and conversation, just online networking event. 
uh, where we learn from each other and we have guest speakers and we have our big ISSA show coming up in November in Las Vegas. I can't wait. And there's going to be tons of education, probably the best education we've ever had at that event this year, plus the floor show with all of the suppliers and that. So um, if you'd like to know more about ISSA, you can just go to this link. Um, residential.issa.com, or you can click on that QR code with your phone. And today I have a special offer just for you for being on this webinar with me is you can get 20% off your first year membership with my discount code. So that write down that discount code or shoot a picture of it with your phone. It's J-H-I-S-S-A member 20. That's going to get you 20% off your first year. And I'll tell you what, I consider my ISSA membership to be free. I pay for it every year just with all of the benefits. So, um, you know, we are here to help you grow your business and um, we just love to get people more involved. So I wanted to make sure you understood about ISSA today. If you have any questions, feel free to connect with me on Facebook anytime. I'd love to share with you. So I hope you found today's webinar helpful. And I know that if you start using some of these strategies, just some, not all of them in your business, that you're going to see some great results. I guarantee you, if you start getting out in your community, you'll see more referrals. Your know, like, and trust factor will go way up, right? Your brand visibility will change for the better. There's no doubt about it. I can't believe how visible my brand is. And the loyalty that people have to your brand will increase. And if all of those things are happening, guess what? You're gonna attract more employees to your business and more customers. And that equals growth, right? And that's what we're all about here at ISSA and Cleaning for a Reason, helping our partners grow. So I would love to know from today's webinar, what is your takeaway? What's one thing that you heard today that you are gonna try in your business? Something you haven't tried before, or maybe you've tried it before, but you just gave up. Um, I hope that you found some helpful information today. I am here to help you grow uh, as an ISSA volunteer. I want to support you and also as a partner in cleaning for a reason. So thank you so much for your attention today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll be here to help with answering questions. And if you have questions about ISSA as well, I would love to help with that. So, all right. So we've got some takeaways coming in. There we go. Thanks, everybody. Um, so I would love to hear uh, if you have any questions. If you are thinking about trying one of these and you want to just talk about it a little bit, um, put your question in the chat. Uh, I am here to help you as much as I can. Lacey says she's going to try the joint venture programs. David is going to get out and start networking. That's awesome, David. Glad to see that. Um, all right. Uh, can Let's see. We'll drop that link in the chat. Maybe, Brendan, can you help me get that link? Yeah. Let's see here. I know it's ISSA, or excuse me, it's residential.issa.com. So um, there we go. Thanks, Lucy. Appreciate your help. Um, yeah, so check out ISSA. And like I said, if you have any questions, um, I would love to help you. So if you want to know more about ISSA, you can reach out to me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, I'm pretty easy to find, Jeannie Henderson. And, uh, and I'm also on the Cleaning for a Reason page, so you can ping me there. But I'm here to answer any of your questions. And I see we have a new Cleaning for a Reason partner. That's so great. Congratulations, Lacey. Thank you to see that. That's so great. Um, all right. Any other, any questions before we go today? Lots of good things. Um, Elizabeth, on your question about 50% off, is that in regard to the ISSA membership? All right, so Brendan um, has a question for me that probably came in from somebody else. So 
Um, what is um, one of my best takeaways from being involved in cleaning for a reason in marketing my business as well as getting employees? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. So cleaning for a reason is a big part of everything that we do. So, and I encourage you to make it the same for your business is that um, in everything that you do, cleaning for a reason just becomes part of that. And um, so if you look at my website, geniecleaning.com, you'll see I have an entire page dedicated to cleaning for a reason and our support there. Uh, and then every event that we go to, we promote cleaning for a reason. Uh, we talk about it in our hiring process. Uh, and I do hear from many prospective employees that they want to work for us because of that. Uh, and many of my current employees love working for us because of what we do with cleaning for a reason. So it does, I believe, help us grow. It makes our job stickier. It makes people more dedicated to the job because they see the purpose. They see how their job is impacting lives in such a great way. Um, but uh, I have made it just part of everything that we do. And it's interesting when I go out into the community and, you know, I tell people what I do and they're like, oh, you're the company that cleans for cancer patients, right? And it takes a while to get to that point. Now, one thing I didn't share today, but I actually put on my own community event every year. We have a week in October where we call it cleaning for cancer week. And we clean for cancer patients every day during that week. We send out news releases. We have a big event. We've even had like a charity auction um, event and things like that. And that has helped build a lot of awareness too. I send out news releases at least twice a year about cleaning for a reason. And we had a great news story earlier this year during cleaning for a reason month in April. So um, it's just a big part of who we are and what we do. Um, you know, so we just put it out there, but like I said, check out our website. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so lots of good questions here. All right, any other questions before we go today? Brendan, do you see any more questions? Oh, there's a Q&A bubble. Okay, no, that, I think we did that. All right, well, I wanna thank everyone for being here, for sticking it out to the end. That's awesome. Uh, you are awesome. Congratulations for investing in yourself today. I want to encourage you to go out and get out into your community, start building relationships with people. And it isn't just for making money, you know, it's, there's a lot of long-term rewards for building those relationships. And I know that once you get doing it, you're going to enjoy it. And I know that you're going to see the results and the rewards that you get from leveraging relationships in your community. It's going to help you build a better team and a bigger business for sure. Um, let's see if we got anything else. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone. You were all awesome for being here. It's been my joy to be your coach today. And um, if I'm not connected with you online already, be sure and connect with me at uh, on Facebook and also on LinkedIn. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. It was so great. Loved being here with you.